Welcome to the Money Hour with host Tina Mitchell. Tina Mitchell, MLO 145420, is a licensed loan originator with Highlands Residential Mortgage Limited, NMLS 134871. The views expressed by the speakers on the following program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of Highlands Residential Mortgage Limited, nor are they necessarily endorsed by Highlands Residential Mortgage Limited. Now in the studio, local mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell. Welcome to the Money Hour at 11.50 a.m. KKNW, the Saturday, October 15th show. You can also listen to my show podcast, Facebook premiere, or you can catch the show on my show YouTube channel. In addition, for more information on upcoming events, please go to Tina Mitchell Events. I am your host and local mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, bringing in expert advice and inside knowledge on today's events and how they affect your money. If you were hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast. I'm here to answer any questions or more importantly, to connect you with the guests that I have on the show today, please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50, or you can also go online to themoneyhour.com. And my lineup for today's show, I have Maria Kaliska of Your Way Up Coaching LLC to advance your career and increase income. Find your North Star. Also in studio, I have Uzma Hamid of John L. Scott. There is always a silver lining. And my last guest on the show today is Dean Van Dyke of the Pillars Group LLC, how to build a rock star employee acquisition plan. Also, if you're watching my show on my Facebook premiere or YouTube channel, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce my producer over at Hubbard Radio, Benny. Hi, Tina. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. And my marketing director, Becky. Good day, Tina. A uh, great team I have behind the scenes and the show would not be here if not for Benny and Becky. So thank you again to both of them. Great information and great guests in studio. For more information on any topic discussed, please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50, or you can go online to themoneyhour.com. And this week, I'll start out as I do each week with a little bit of money chat. Money. Tina Mitchell here with your money chat. When I looked at the bond market on Thursday morning, a quote came to mind. A rainbow is most beautiful after a storm. Be the rainbow. The consumer price index CPI was released and was higher than the market expected. This, uh, this of course, further undermines the Fed's effectiveness to handle inflation. The market reaction was an obvious one, more pain ahead. There's no sugarcoating it. The 10-year broke 4% upon the release. Dark inflation read, but dawn should be coming. The September CPI report showed that overall inflation increased by 0.4%, which was double the 0.2% expected. Year-over-year inflation declined from 8.3% to 8.2%, but it was expected to decline 8.1%. The real story here is the core rate, which strips out food and energy prices. It increased by 0.6%, which was hotter than the 0.5% anticipated. As a result, the year-over-year -year core inflation increased from 6.3% to 6.6%, which was hotter than the 6.5% expected. Shelter rose by 0.7%, which matches the highest increase since 1991. Rents rose 0.8% last month and are now up 7.2% year-over-year, which is up from 6.7%. Owners, equivalent rent, which ties, which tries to capture the rise in home prices, but does, does not do a very well job, also rose 0.8% and is up 6.7% year over year, up from 6.3%. While the CPI rental costs are still catching up, real rent costs have started to come off their peak and slightly decline. Looking at more of the internals, energy prices fell 2% from a month ago, bringing the annual gain to 20%. Gasoline prices 
fell 5% and are up 18% year over year. Food prices, which make up 14% of CPI, climbed 0.8% in September, bringing the year over year gain to 11%. Medical care costs were also a main factor as they rose 0.8% last month and 6% year over year. While this report is negative for the bond market and mortgage interest rates, the worst is now behind us. The September reading is the last low figure from 2021 that needed to be replaced. Going forward, the comparisons get much tougher, and I expect inflation to start dropping, which will help mortgage interest rates. On the Fed minutes, the minutes were most hawkish, hawkish. Many said that the Fed needs to continue tightening even as the labor market slowed. Cost of taking too little action overweighed the cost of doing too much. Once a restrictive level of the Fed funds rate is reached, it's needed to keep it there for some time. On the slightly dovish side, several said that the Fed needs to collaborate the pace of tightening with the risk and the adverse effect on the economy and that it would be appropriate at some point to slow Slow the pace of increases. It's early in the cycle and the market is still digesting the news. From here, we will have to weather out the market. We might have a fighting chance of recovering. We'll see how the dust settles after the market continues to respond. Just don't forget rainbows. Tina Mitchell here, and that is your money chat coming up next on the money hour. The advance to advance your career and increase income. Find your North Star. Maria Kaliskoff of Your Way Up Coaching LLC, right here on 1150 AM KKNW. You are listening to The Money Hour on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, October 15th show. You can also listen to my show podcast, Facebook premiere, or you can catch my show on my show YouTube channel. In addition, for more information on upcoming events, please go to tinamitchellevents.com. I am your host and local mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell. It's a great day to talk about money. And that is what the show is all about, how to make money, save money, so you can have a better quality of life for you and for your family. If you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast. I'm here to answer any questions or connect you with the guests that I have on the show today. Please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50, or you can go online to themoneyhour.com. And now on my show, I have Maria Kalistikoff of Your Way Up Coaching LLC to advance your career and increase your income. Find your North Star right here on 1150. AM KKNW. It is so great to have you on the show, uh, Maria. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah. Hi, Tina. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Yeah. And I hope I did okay pronouncing your last name. You did very good. It okay, good. Kalesnikov. <laughs> <laughs> I tried practicing before coming in studio. Yeah, uh, that's know, a, a tongue twister sorry. for sure. <laughs> Well, a little bit about Maria before I get into our conversation. Maria has more than 20 years of human resource background together with more than 10 years of managerial experience. Her last 10 years of her HR corporate career, she was maintained mainly involved in people development and her last corporate position was a head of the talent management department. In 2017, she started her personal coaching practice, Your Way Up coaching. In 2018, she got her first coaching certifi certification with ICF, International Coaching Federation, and now she holds professional certified coach credentials with ICF. She has always had a passion for helping people and was acknowledged for doing it in a very productive way. Maria helps people to skyrocket their corporate and business careers, get professional work on personal growth, gain success, and thrive upon their potential. So again, really excited to have you um, on the show, Maria. So you state uh, that you're a career strategist. How is a career coach different from a career strategist? Oh, that's a great question. Well, both of them actually focus on how to advance career and get promotion. But I, as a mm, career strategist, prefer to look at the career on from the holistic point of view, which is it's not just the next level up, 
it is about finding the job or occupation uh, or a business that brings satisfaction and joy to your life. And that is from a holistic and wide point of view. And that is more about strategy rather than just tools and rules on how to move up. That makes sense. And if you can bring satisfaction and joy into where a big portion of your time is spent, that really is the name of the game. It's not focusing on the money. It's focusing that you're doing what you love to do and then the money will follow. So Maria, what are the questions that your clients come to you and ask you to help them resolve? Well, um, mainly my clients who come to me, they're either stuck in their careers and they don't know what the next step is, or they may know what the next step is, but they don't know what to do about it. Or even they don't, they know what to do, but they don't have confidence or courage enough to actually advance their careers. So uh, either way, either way, we talk about how to improve and how to get better and how to actually advance the career doesn't matter what it is, but we do define what is actually, is that what they want to do in the coaching session? Yeah. And that's a, you know, having a a coach that can not only have a roadmap to follow for success, but more importantly, to know the questions to ask, because each of us already knows the answers. It's just drawing those answers out from within. And that's where a great coach comes in to be able to really uh, go deep in the questioning. So you're able to experience those solutions that you're actually coming up with on your own. Correct, Maria? Very much correct, Tina. You know, you know how it works. (laughs) Yes. Well, I've, I've, uh, been through coaching in my 27 years, uh, for sure. And I think that, uh, it's critically important to every, for everyone, uh, to have a coach that coach may be different depending on, uh, what chapter that you're in, in your career, but it's critically important to have that person from the outside of your business that is looking in from that angle and has the expertise again, to help you navigate through that process. So you can ultimately get to the solution, the quickest and the most most efficient way. So Maria, what is a North star and how does it help in building a career? Well, if we talk about, um, holistic career, um, it is about the career vision, right? Uh, and then if we think about North star, that's a metaphor of a star that shines the way that shows you the way. So when you have your career vision, or sometimes I call it career, uh, ultimate career goal. This, mm-hmm. is, this is your North Star. This is something that will shine the light because when you know who you want to be uh, and what is your goal, it, it makes it so easy to make decisions on whether to take or not the opportunity because there is a very simple question there. Will that opportunity advance me further so I can move forward to get where I wanna be? Yeah. So that's why that's why North Star is sometimes I call it a beacon, sometimes it's a lighthouse, whatever comes to mind, but it's like most common North Star. And a lot of clients use that themselves. It's not that I tell them yeah. they come up with that themselves. That's why yeah. I thought it would be a good thing to explain that. And, and it, it is a, what a great visual too to see yeah. your North Star, right? Indeed. Yeah, because the biggest uh, challenge that people I have, I I feel that they have in business, because no matter what business that you're in, there are opportunities in every industry, every business, no matter what's happening in the economy or in the market, uh, mm-hmm. where the success comes from is the mindset, and that again is what a coach can help you in opening up that mindset that is already in you. So if you're listening to the show right now and you're waking up in the morning stressed out because you have to go into your career, you're doing it wrong or you're in the wrong career. And if you're having a difficult time sleeping at night because you can't shut it off, that's an indicator that you're not working in your passion uh, space. And uh, Maria definitely can help with that. So Maria, what are the major career roadblocks people face and how do you help them deal with that journey to get over to the other side? Yeah. Well, uh, there are quite a few actually there. And the most recent, for example, that I came across uh, was about 
a people think that um, their managers are responsible for their careers. So they sit tight and quiet and waiting until their managers will help them to be promoted. Well, guess what? <laughs> your career is your own responsibility. Yeah. That is why um, your manager don't normally read your mind. So if you don't tell them that that's what you want, there is a chance they will not know and they will not do anything for you. So you have to be very vocal and tell them what is it that you're looking for. Yeah. The other thing actually is that uh, people are afraid to talk about that because they think that they will come across as greedy or needy and they don't want that. That's why they also keep silence. Well, I mean, it is your responsibility and you have to talk about that. And it is absolutely all right. And the manager should encourage you, but still it is in your hands and uh, you should be doing that. Yeah. The task is to ask if you don't ask, the answer is always no. And not when you ask, the answer is always yes. But if the answer is not what you want it to be and that doesn't work with you, then it gives you the answer that you need to make a change from where you're at right now. So Maria, why would people who are looking to increase their income use a career coach? Well, you know what? If you get promoted, you, that usually is accompanied with salary increase, right? <laughs> so that's one of the perks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's one way. Or sometimes people may think that they have hit a ceiling at their corporate position. So then transitioning to business and becoming a business owner can be another opportunity to increase income. Or we can also uh, brainstorm and consider what are the other um, income streams that you can generate, even if you decide to stay in the corporation. So all these questions we talk about in coaching. So I think if you want to increase your income, career coaching is a very good destination to come to. <laughs> yes, definitely. So Maria, what topics around money do you discuss in your client sessions? Well, uh, we talk about how to build personal budget, for example, how to save money, or as I mentioned, how to, um, gen uh, where to find those additional streams, income streams that it can support you. Also, if we, if somebody is thinking about transitioning into the, and become an, um, an entrepreneur, then what is that safety net that is necessary to have in order to feel comfortable transitioning? And um, interesting enough, a lot of people want, want to have more money, but when I ask what is that more, mm -hmm. they have a hard time to come up with that <laughs> answer. Uh -huh. So we do define what is that, what is the number, which is, makes it easier than to um, execute that. Yeah. So your co coach is going to help you find the warrior with inside. Your coach is then going to help you bring that warrior to the surface. And then it's going to also help you hold you accountable for what your own goals are. Um, and another benefit of, of having a coach walk you through this process. So Maria, can you share an example of a time when someone worked with you and you unlock something in their career that they might have not discovered without you? Yeah. Well, I remember I was working with a um, senior manager who had a mindset of individual contributor and who felt that she's an imposter and instead of managing people she was basically doing work for them because she was so afraid to confront and be, have a tough conversation well six months later she was promoted to director acting as a director and thinking as a director and she would never think about that when we started and now we still communicating and she's so thankful uh, for having sessions with me. See, just what I said, your coach is going to help bring that warrior out 
a good yeah. coach uh, will. And that's why I've asked Maria to come in um, to share with you because I, I bring in the best of the best. So you have all of the resources that you uh, need. So Maria, there's a lot of talk about possible recession, uh, me being in the mortgage industry, uh, going through all of the, the data and what's happening in the market. And when an economy tightens, people often cut things that they shouldn't cut like marketing. So how do you coach your clients when money is tight or there's fiercest fiercity around the potential of money getting tight in the near future uh, to make sure they don't make big mistakes in what they're taking off of their spending? Well, honestly, I see coaching as an investment. It's not an, an expenditure. And whatever you learn in coaching will stay with you for years to come. And then there, it is about courage and it is about being bold and it is about getting the confidence uh, in the decisions that you're making. So um, whatever you are going to do going forward with coaching, you will have that uh, courage and boldness to move forward. And I mean, and it is always faster when you work with a coach. Yeah, when you're not doing it all on your own. So I have less than a minute, uh, Maria, just a really quick wrap up, uh, call to action for my listeners today. Well, if you're looking to advance your career, um, find the support system in your career coaching or in, uh, in the career strategist to make you move faster and you feel more confident in advancing your career and getting more money. Yeah, Maria, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to have you on the show and I look forward to having you back uh, in the future. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Coming up next in the Money Hour, there is always a silver lining. Uzma Hamid of John L. Scott right here on 1150 AM KKNW. You are listening to the Money Hour on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, October 15th show. You can also listen to my show podcast, Facebook premiere, or you can catch my show on my show YouTube channel. In addition for upcoming events, you can go to tinamitchellevents.com. I am your host and local mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell. I am here to help you build a strong financial blueprint one week and one show at a time. If you are hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast. I'm here to answer any questions or connect you with the guests that I have on the show today. Please call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's 1-855-411-50, or you can go online to themoneyhour.com. And now in studio, Uzma Hamid of John L. Scott. There is always a silver lining right here in 1150 AM KKNW. And, uh, uh, Uzma, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Dina. Thank you for having me. Yeah, very excited to uh, chat with you, especially uh, with what you and I are going through uh, in a shift in the market right now. So a little bit about uh, Uzma before moving to the beautiful Pacific Northwest and making an industry leap to real estate from corporate law, Uzma was a trend transactional attorney for five years. Uh, she guided national and multinational corporations from Asia, Europe, and North America through complex commercial transactions. In addition to being a licensed world tour, uh, she is admitted to the bars of Wash Bar of Washington State, England, and Wales and Pakistan. Uh, she also holds an MBA finance with her education and background in law and business within expertise in contracts and negotiation, and her passion for helping people. Uzma is a solid advocate for assisting people in making this crucial decision. Uh, she lives in Kirkland, loves traveling, interior design and photography, uh, runs a local photography studio, bubble snap photography, and loves creating personalized art. So i uh, excited to have a conversation with you because we're, uh, we're in the same uh, arena with myself and mortgage and you and real estate. So is there a good or bad time to buy real estate, Uzma? It all depends, actually. Uh, you know, some people tend to focus on um, seasonality, by which we mean, you know, we see seasonal trends in real estate. We have more listings and more activity in the spring and summer months, and that kind of sort of slows down relatively in fall. 
or something specific in the market which we are dealing with right now um higher interest rates or should i say relatively higher interest rates because again it's all about perspective it depends so while it's good to keep an eye on those factors and to you know pay attention to those those should never be the reason why somebody should buy or sell it should actually be about what's going on in your life what are your goals and what your situation and circumstances are so just to give you an example if there's a seller who thinks um winter might be a great month for me to um uh, sell because there's going to be lesser competition um well, to counter that, we could say that there's also going to be fewer buyers looking in those months. So shouldn't focus on that. But winter could be a great time for that seller if, let's say, they need money or maybe they're relocating or any number of factors that are impacting their um, their life in that particular moment. Um, and another example would be, um, you know, a discussion that I'm having with a lot of buyers these days, and I'm sure you can relate with that too, is everything is fine they have the down payment they are ready to move but they are thinking that the interest rates are so high so we should probably hold back on buying or you know moving ahead with an investment uh, property now the point comes down to is the interest rate a specific situation in the market such a big factor because there are tools to counter that you could do a temporary buy down you could do a permanent buy down if everything else is working out, um, it could actually be a great time because sellers right now are very accommodating to negotiating and you could actually get a very good deal right now. So what I'm trying to say, I guess, is it depends on a person's um, circumstances and yeah. it requires a very personalized discussion of what's going on in your life and what your goals are. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's what should determine when, should buy, when one should buy or sell. Yeah, great, great advice, because unlike any other investment, um, there's an emotional piece and there's a lifestyle with home ownership. And no matter what you're doing, you know, you can't uh, absolutely get the bottom of the uh, stock market or Bitcoin and you can't absolutely get the bottom absolutely. of real estate. But what you what you know is you're in a position to be able to get a home and be able to possibly negotiate and get the lowest price on that home that we've had for years. And if the interest rates do go down, because there's a chance that they absolutely will, uh, you just turn around and refinance. But you're really able Exactly. Yeah. Yep. You sit Absolutely. around and wait. That's coming. Um, That's coming. Next year we'll be refinancing, if not next year, year after. Yeah. yeah Absolutely. <laughs> That's what I, I think. And when that happens, everything's going to, just as the interest rates went up overnight, uh, they're going to go down overnight as well. And then you've missed the opportunity yeah. because the multiple yeah. offers are going to come right back up. Exactly. And yeah. So and then you might be price. paying $200,000 above asking and you would still be losing. We exactly. So take advantage of the market now. <laughs> Get in there now. <laughs> so what mistakes do you see that sellers are making, uh, Uzma? Um, essentially trying to focus less on what the data and trends in the market are mm -hmm. and focusing more on what the neighbor maybe got a couple of months ago. Yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting because, you know, when you present data, most people are very understanding and they let go of that um, that short-sighted opinion uh, because many people are just focusing on what Zillow is telling them or what a neighbor got but the best example is right now we're in a transitional market and the reality that was two months ago or four months ago is much different now mm -hmm. so focusing on that never really helps and um, I'm lucky um, that I get to work with people who pay attention to that data I personally rely very heavily on data and when you show them that this this was the reality six months ago and this is what the reality now is uh, most people um, understand but if you don't, then that becomes a problem. Yeah. And that's why you need to hire an expert um, like Usman in real exactly. estate that knows how to help you price. And then you need to listen to her advice on what you need to do to maximize the results at the yeah, end sure. of it. Yeah. So yeah. Usman, what about uh, buyers? Um, what do you see buyers doing? What mistakes are they making? So the real mistake I think buyers make is not really putting down their offer in writing and trying to verbally negotiate. I mean, when you're interested in a property, it's always a good idea to pick up the phone and chat with the other side and see where they're at. And, you know, if there's anything specific that you can um, offer the seller to make your offer more enticing and then use that to um, you know, structure your offer. But not wanting to actually put something down and insisting that let's figure out what's the seller's bottom line, for example. So no seller is going to give you the bottom line because you as a buyer are not going to give the seller a bottom line. So put it down in writing. 
and see how the seller responds. And then we have a more realistic idea of where we are at, what we need to adjust and how to win if we want to win this. And if we are at all you know in a zone where we can come to an agreement or this is just not the property for us so basically putting it down in writing and i've seen multiple uh, buyers sometimes on my own listings um, just trying to verbally negotiate and not putting it down in writing and just losing out on the opportunity because somebody else came and the opportunity is gone yeah yeah if it's not in writing it doesn't exist right it doesn't exist exactly <laughs> so so what's happening uh in the market we've uh, obviously seen a shift uh, without a down, but without a doubt. But do you uh, feel that we're in a balanced market or a buyer's market? Uh, neither. Okay. So for most price points and for most um, areas in our market, it is still very much a seller's market. It's just cer certain circumstances. The stock market is doing what it's doing. The midterm midterm elections are coming up, and whenever there's uncertainty, people tend to hold back. It's a lot of external factors. It's only a few areas where we are in more of a maybe coming closer to a normal market. We are still very much in a seller's market. It's just the circumstances surrounding it. And as to your question about what I'm seeing in the market, I think we are going to be in a very strong market. We are going to continue being in a very strong market. Um, as to my discussions uh, with, with buyers uh, who are hoping to wait, maybe, uh, maybe the interest rates will go down, maybe the prices will come down because uh, what we read in the media sometimes is, oh my goodness, the market is crashing. Um, you have to take the whole picture into account. You can't just compare now with maybe one year or two years. It's a whole perspective that you have to look at. So for example, if the media says that prices are crashing, maybe they're comparing now with last year when it was COVID and the situation was much different. Yes. Right? Yes. But if, you know, for anyone like that, I like to show them a trend. If you compare the prices now with pre-COVID times, you will see that the prices have appreciated. But yes. if you compare it just with last year, yes, a house that was selling for, you know, maybe $200,000 above list, you are not paying that kind of price. And that is the opportunity in this market. Yes. So if the prices are not going down. The market is not crashing because real estate essentially is all about supply and demand. Uh, we have a very diversified economy and we constantly bring in people. We have a steady demand. Um, we don't have enough land. We don't have enough supply. Mm -hmm. And when there's less supply, there's more demand, prices tend to go up. Yes, absolutely. I, I am just, I'm telling my buyers, it, this is a hidden opportunity. It will be Absolutely. a missed opportunity. If you don't take action, yep. you're going to be sorry uh, when we you did. wait for interest rates to go down and everybody yep. else waited as well. So get into the market. You don't lose money in real estate unless you're forced to sell in a bar bad market and you're not reinvesting in something at the yep. same time. Absolutely. So get in and take advantage of this opportunity. So we're... Um, where do you see the market going maybe in a, in a longer uh, term, Uzma? Um, I will just um, start my answer from my answer to the previous question where I oh. said this is a very diversified economy. So we have, you know, Washington is such a wonderful state. We have eight major industries, actually probably more. We have, you know, we have tech, we have um, food and agriculture, we have forest products. We have so many, you know, we have a airport city, we have distribution channels. There's so much going on here. Um, we offer so much to the world. We are constantly bringing people into the area and people need houses to live. And like I said, um, in an answer to a previous question, we just don't have enough land. We just don't have enough supply. Um, and when those two things, there's, there's a deficit between those two things, um, your market has to be strong. Yeah. There's just no way it can come down. So I see um, a very strong market going forward. And um, for anyone who can afford to be a home buyer, now is as good a time as any. And I've been saying that for since forever because now is always a great time to be a homeowner because Absolutely. you're only going to uh, see appreciation. Yeah, there the inventory is is for sure, and and if you and I'm really glad that you mentioned employment because if you look at the history of real estate, it always follows employment. It always. does, absolutely. And you know, right now builders are not building because of the cost of the build, sellers are not selling, and they're not going to unless rates go down because they're sitting at an under three percent interest rate, and the yep. interest rates are higher, and so that's what's causing and yep. will continue to cause the supply, the supply and demand, um, which means over a period of time. 
uh, the real estate value is going to continue to go up. So why is it also seeing the trend? I'm sorry, I'm cutting you there. That, that's no, also no. what we see in the trend. If you go back as far back as you want, except for any specific situation that happened, like COVID happened, or you know the uh, financial crisis of uh, 20, 2008, 2010 happened. Mm -hmm. If you ignore that, the prices are steadily going up. So there's yes. there's actual data supporting that. And if you bought at the top of the market in the financial meltdown and the Great Recession of 2008, you did not lose money unless you were forced to sell on the market and you weren't reinvesting exactly. at the same time. Absolutely. So it's all a period of time yeah. uh, in real estate. So Uzma, why is it important to work with a realtor professional? Uh it's, it's whether, whether it's a real estate professional or it's any industry, any professional. Um, of course, the first step is to find a good one. But once you find the good one, the, the value that the professional brings is they are doing this day in and day out. So if a plumber takes 10 minutes to fix a leak, it's not because it was easy. It was because the plumber has 15, 20 or whatever number of years of experience to know what the problem is and what needs to be fixed. And he's in and out. So yes. that applies to any industry, whether it's real estate or any professional. Um, the example I like giving again, I would like to give again, is uh, is the current market. It's a transitional market. And sometimes people think, oh, my goodness, finding a home is so easy. I can go on Redfin and I can find a home. Um, absolutely, you can find a home. But finding a home is just a piece of the picture. And there's so much more that goes into it. And the best part about working with a professional in a market like this is knowing where you can negotiate, yeah. how far you can take those negotiations, what you can give, what you can get. So it's about overall getting a good deal. So it's, yeah. it's a real estate professional, it's a plumber, it's a mortgage professional, it's a medical professional, anyone, they know what they're doing. And if you can trust them, trust me, that's the best thing you can do for yourself. Absolutely. And, that, and everybody looks at the beginning of the process. A lot of the work happens once you're under contract and getting to the end of the process. You don't want any issues there. So I've got a less than less than a minute uh, with you. Uh, really quickly, one tip that you would like to give anyone that's considering uh, investing in real estate. Uzma. Don't wait. Like I just said, don't wait. My, my favorite uh, quote of all times, um, Will Rogers said, don't wait to buy real estate, buy real estate and wait. So just don't wait. Go ahead. <laughs> that is great advice. And I'm right there with you. Uh, take advantage of the opportunity or it will be a missed one. Uzma, thank you so much for coming in and sharing your expertise you for with me. my listeners. Absolutely. Coming up next in the Money Hour, how to build a rock star employee acquisition plan. Dean Van Dyke of the Pillar Group LLC right here on 1150 AM KKNW. You are listening to The Money Hour on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, October 15th show. You can also listen to my show podcast, Facebook premiere. You can catch my show on my show YouTube channel. In addition, for more information on upcoming events, please go to tinamitchellevents.com. I am your host and local mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell. I bring into studio each week the best of the best experts in our local market on everything regarding your money. And now in studio, uh, Dean Van Dyke of the Pillar Group LLC, how to build a rock star employee acquisition plan right here on 1150 AM KKNW. Welcome back to the show, Dean. Well, it's great to be back. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I love saying your name, Dean Van Dyke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I know like why, it it's too, just so. fun to come right out. All right, so uh, a little bit about Dean. With the Pillars Group is a certified business coach and consultant, sought after speaker and trainer, and contributing author to the Six Figure Coach Magazine. For more than 25 years, Dean has been inspiring, motivating, and equipping others to live out their dreams. A person of strong faith, Dean has devoted himself to developing and strengthening the personal and professional growth of others through business coaching coaching, training, speaking engagements, and most importantly, serving others. Dean is a husband, a father, a veteran, thank you for your service, and a hobbyist. Since 1989, Dean has been happily married to Maria. They are proud parents of three amazing boys, Michael, Jonathan, and Zachary. And Dean loves the outdoors and is an avid shooting sport 
enthusiast. So as I get into uh, our conversation here, Dean, I'd like to start out with what is the key thing when recruiting for companies? Well, as you, you may be aware, you know, the biggest challenge right now is, is finding qualified uh, folks for the team. And, and the, the one key thing for them is having, an, having a rock star ad. I mean, if their ad is cookie cutter, just like most that I see and view, um, it's, it's not going to attract the top talent that you're looking for. And that's, that's the biggest challenge. And in fact, speaking to a, a group of uh, auto professionals last weekend, you know, that's where they were struggling. And, and that's where, when we looked at some job ads, did some critiques, uh, they were like, oh, you know, it was kind of like that light bulb went off and they're like, oh, we can do so much better. And yeah. so. Yeah, if you're not getting the results that you want, it is almost always in how you're delivering your message. And mm -hmm. the adjustment to that delivery, it, delivery is usually just adjusting a few of those words and how you're delivering that. So, so true, Dean. So what is the key thing when recruiting or no, we just answered that. What are the, I'm getting mixed in my questions here. What are the top Mars. 10 hiring mistakes, uh, Dean, if you could list those quickly? You bet. So the, the biggest challenge most, th most people make is thinking that experience always counts. And, and while experience is great, what you're bringing in is a lot of bad habits potentially. And so uh, another area is too much emphasis on the interview um, or hiring in your own image. Uh, you know, folks should look at what are my weaknesses that I need to augment and bring in somebody that has a strength in that area. Um, overly impressed by formal education. Well, that's a great to see in a resume. Can you apply what you've learned? Mm -hmm. And, and you know, sometimes that's not uh, possible with what they've learned. And so training is another big one. Uh, we rely on training to fill gaps. And if the skill set doesn't match what you're trying to do, that is a huge challenge. And, you know, one out, another key one is poaching from your competitors. That will come back around in some form or fashion yeah. by a competitor poaching one of your team members. And the last thing is, or not last thing, but the one thing I always love to talk about is, you know, we have two of these for a reason and one of these mm -hmm. need to listen more and listen for cues so that you can understand who you're potentially going to hire. Overlooking cultural fit, that's huge. Mm. Uh, because if it's not a fit for the team, it's a really big, it creates bigger challenges down the road. And <clears throat> lacking a structured hiring process, I don't know how many business owners I talk to that just don't have a process. And, I, and one of the key things I tell them is, so if you like to stay out of hot water with the government, have a structured hiring process. Uh, last but not least is that solid onboarding plan, because if you don't bring them on and make them feel like a rock star on that through your onboarding process, it sets the tone for, for the future. So those are the wow. top 10. Just like in a marriage, you don't want it to be the best at the beginning. You want to get better as you go through it. Doesn't always happen uh, I'm not, like I'm that. I'm not going to touch that one. Okay, okay we'll I'm, leave that alone. I'm not going to touch that one. <laughs> Hello, Maria, to uh, Dean's wife. If you're listening to the show, all right, Dean. <laughs> what is it that's so tough to hire? Where do you see that people, uh, businesses, have the biggest challenges to hire? So the biggest challenge people um, that they're having today is, you know, there's 10 million at last, when I last checked the data, it was like over 10 million job openings. Um, but really it's qualified workers. You know, last week, when I was talking to these auto industry folks, you know, they've had folks that apply for a job. It could be a level one, two or three technician. And they're coming from places that, you know, from retail and have mm -hmm. no experience. And so the biggest challenge for them is, is okay, do they have the desire to learn? Uh, because when I started out in the auto industry, I won't say how many decades, but it was a few. Uh, I didn't know, but I grew up with a father who had spent 30 plus years as journeyman mechanic. So I had the knowledge, but a lot of people today, they want to get into a new field. And in, auto, in the auto industry, depending on what you're doing, you've got to understand what you're doing because it can be deadly if you do it wrong. And that's, that's the biggest challenge they're having is just qualified workers. And, you know, another big one is still turnover, um, lack of childcare. That's huge. Uh, and then, you know, there are folks that are still concerned about health. I mean, it's, you, you know, we still have 
uh, you know, issues with COVID, we have variants. And, and so there are some concerns with that as well. So, yeah. yeah and so in, in, important when you're going through that interview process and really getting to know the candidate and uh, uh, having you, your company stand out is just ask them two questions. I mean, what's really important to you? Um, and, and what, you know, what is it lacking, you know, right now? And then you can really tailor, uh, around what their needs are in your conversation. Right. So Dean, what is the cost of a bad hire? You know, there's some statistics out there that say it could be up to 30% of the annual salary. Now, Put that in perspective, uh, I'll give you an example. So in the auto industry here in Washington state, it's about uh, on the uh, auto body technician side, it's about 88,000, which is average. So 30%, that's a pretty big number for a for an employer to, to eat because that's what happens. And yeah. uh, luckily I can help them calculate that. I've got a workbook that actually you plug the numbers in and it'll give you the number. Now, a lot of business owners don't want that number because they're, you know, they don't want to see what what that potential damage is, but there's more just in, in thinking about that as well as the motivation, the impact to your team. I mean, those are some big ones that are tough to overcome. And lastly, when that talking about a bad hire is your business's reputation. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, when it's a, a bad hire, then you also have the retention issue. And if you've got somebody in your team, that's a bad hire. It's spreading throughout the rest of your team where your great hires initially could not be, could become not such, such great parts of the team because you've got that bad um mindset that's going through the culture exactly. of the organization. So Dean, what is an essential thing for a company to do when hiring that they, that they should remember? So one of the key things I always do is, is when working with my clients is, as they work to bring you know candidates through is we put them through a test drive. Uh, we put them through uh, a situation that they would be doing in their normal course of work. For example, one of my clients uh, is in the auto industry. And if they're hiring a new technician, we're going to bring that technician in for maybe four to probably four to eight hours paid, of course, and give them a project to do, whether it's metal fabrication, taking a part of vehicle or something like that, so that we can understand and evaluate whether or not they can do the job. And if they can't do the job, then you know it's not a good fit for them. And also it helps you to understand team dynamics. Uh, because I always recommend taking them to lunch, let the team take them to lunch and let the team interact and understand who this person is that they're, that they're seeking to hire. Definitely. Yeah. I call that working interviews and, you know, the mortgage business, um, and a lot of industries and in, different, but the same as what you just shared is, mm -hmm. um, is case studies, you know, Right. Put, up the, uh, put together a case study. You need somebody to present, have them put together a presentation. If you need somebody that needs to be out networking for your business, you need to go to a networking event and see how they engage. So really important to have those working interviews. And just as Dean said, uh, to have them in doing that job uh, to see how they're going to do. And really great uh, share of having them interact with the team because ultimately that's who they're going to be spending their time with. And the right. team will appreciate having an input of who's going to be brought into that team. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So Absolutely. Dean, how should a company craft its recruiting ad? What are key points? So, so one of the things I, in my, in my practice is I use a formula called AIDA, which is attention, interest, desire, and action. And using that structure helps to one, let them know that you're looking for rock stars and you can use different verbiage, but um, you know, a lot of ads you see out there is, um, you know, hey, come work for us. We're a great company. Well, I would hope so. Um, but it's it's things like using a specific, using that formula and there's other marketing formulas out there that you can use, but that's the one I use with my clients. And last week we actually went through an exercise to where I showed them. I didn't pick on their job ads. I went and found another one, but, uh, and we went through there and I said, hey, this is how I would revise this ad. And you could see all the light bulbs go off in their heads about, uh oh, wow, that is different. Yes. And they act, and then I had them, you know, rewrite their job ads and then present them. And it was it was it was an amazing difference. 
Yeah, that is, uh, that's great. And by having a, a great ad, you're standing out most likely from all of the people that you're trying to compete for that same candidate and your ad gonna, is going to stand out uh, for them. So where could a company generate recruiting leads? So the, the first place I tell them to look is look in house. Uh, you know, there could be, uh, you know, one of your team members has a referral, knows mm-hmm. somebody, but they don't think about it, right? Unless you ask. Yeah. And in the other place I always look is call back previous employees that were rock stars on your team because you never know what their situation is. If you haven't stayed in contact, then it's it's somewhat of a, you know, that's that's the quickest way. But as you know, with networking, referrals are the best way to mm-hmm. find that next resource. And, and when the business owners are out networking, uh, you know, and I've got a list of 20 different ones. I, I promise I won't go through them all here, but, uh, you know, when the business owners are out networking, every networking opportunity could potentially be a job interview for yeah. that they could do. And so it's just being aware and, and understanding what those different um, avenues are. And if you notice, I didn't mention job boards uh, because that's where everybody runs. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's... Just like if you're in, uh, if you're in sales in your business, it's the same. If you're uh, going out and recruiting uh, for candidates, is it's a much more successful process if you court the warm and don't have to stock the cold. So, Dean, what are Correct. some tech needs to techniques to screen initial candidates? So, one of the things that I love to coach uh, clients as well as folks that are in the re- you know out there recruiting is you really need to there's some quick screening processes that you can use. First of all, stop having them email your business address, set up a separate and distinct recruiting email, whether it's recruiting at abc.com, but at least they're not going to your inbox. And second, I always set up a separate phone number because if they're going to call and in your ad, you call this out, you know, Hey, call this number between the hours of two and 4 PM on these two days and leave a 60 second voicemail about why we should hire you. The folks that call outside those hours, we're not going to talk to them because one attention, it's a lack of attention to detail. And in any job that you do, attention to detail is important. And so those two key things will help you screen out the ones that are not the rock stars. Yeah, makes sense. All right, we've got uh, less than a, a minute, um, a shout out or a call to action. Uh, anything to share with our listeners team before I wrap up the show? You bet. So if, if you're struggling to hire, if you can't find who you're, who you're looking for, please don't hesitate to reach out. I offer a 30 minute complimentary coaching session. And I'll also provide my four step recruiting process that you can take and implement and go find that rock star employee. Yes. Well said. Thank you so much, Dean, uh, again, for coming into the show. I look forward to having you back. Thank you. Uh, Tina Mitchell, your host and local mortgage expert, having to sign off today. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday uh, and your Sunday. I look forward to talking more money with you next weekend right here on 1150 AM KKNW.